Almost as if, as if someone passed behind me, slightly out of focus, but not too much that you can't see them. Must have been the wind. Wow, for a slasher film, there sure isn't a lot of slashing going on. There it is. TJ, we you just... you just outside? What? Me? No, I've been right here, watching this... masterpiece. I could have sworn. Must be my imagination. And he made me miss the end of the film. How am I meant to spend Halloween now? remember putting this in there. I must have put it in right before I went to space and made the Alien Covenant review. Oh, that didn't end well. And what's this? A Halloween game set within the Halloween franchise that I've never seen or played before. Hmm. This I have to take a look at. Also, Connor, can you, uh, can you please stop playing that? Sorry. The year is 1978, and a new low-budget horror film has just been released to both critical and financial acclaim across America. What is the name of this film, I hear you ask? Well, it's none other than the Star Wars Holiday Spec- Not really, it's Halloween. I absolutely adore this film. Everything about it is just so perfect. The story, the shots, the sounds, the score, and the sheer amount of disinterest in the actors' voices as they say goodbye to each other. See you later. Bye. Bye. Okay, maybe forget that last one, but everything else in this film is great. So it's no surprise that it would go on to make not one, not two, not even three, but actually... Wait, how many actually are there? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... Eleven more films in the franchise. And sure, not all of them are great. Actually, quite a lot of them aren't great. But the point is, uh, the first one's really good. So it was only a matter of time before we would finally get an entry into the series in the form of a standalone video game. Which we now sort of have in the form of a f fan game by the name of Halloween. Just Halloween. Uh, let's just throw the video game onto the back of that so we, uh, we don't confuse anyone. But is this fan game any good? And does it truly capture the horror aspects that made the early film so good? Well, let's find out. So, without further ado, let's delve into Halloween, the, the, the video game. And so the game begins with a... Uh, interesting cutscene. You, you're just gonna stand there? This is then followed by a brief wall of text, giving some backstory and explaining what's happened. Michael Myers, the young psychopathic killer, escapes from his sanitarium and returns to Haddonfield where... Oh. Th that's fine, I, I didn't want to read it anyway. You play as this unnamed character in bathrobes here. Why is she in bathrobes? I'm not too sure. Why am I in bathrobes? I'm not too sure. Uh, but the point is you play as her. And your aim throughout the game is to simply escape the hospital you're trapped in before Michael kills you first. In order to do this, 
You spend the first 10 minutes of the game exploring the hospital, which actually ends up being the strongest part of the entire game. And that's because this part is so ripe with atmosphere, and feels like it was just pulled out of one of the films. It's slow and dark, and the section doesn't rely on jump scares. Okay, th there's one, but the rest of the section there isn't. Instead, sound is heavily relied upon, just like in the films. You can just be walking along and then suddenly, you hear the sound of a door creaking to the side of you. Oh no, my worst fear. Doors. Is Michael behind the door? Is he now following behind you? It's this fear and tension that the sound design creates through this early level that makes it so effective and genuinely interesting to play. And that goes for most of the rest of the game, because the sound design used here to create atmosphere, for the most part, is actually really good. And it's made even better through the use of the actual sound effects from the films themselves, like... It makes it feel like it's straight out of one of the films, which really helps the game overall, considering the game's graphics at times aren't the best, and the animations can look a bit, well, whatever you call this. But notice I said that the sound design is really well done, for the most part, and that's because there's one section of this game where it's really not good. Um, it's, be it's best I just show you. Oh God! Please no! No! Why? All I feel when I see this is confusion. Why? Out of all the sound effects in the world, would you choose that one? That's, that's Michael, uh, from The Office, ripped straight out from the show. And it's from this point onwards that the game really begins to go downhill, as the gameplay takes a turn for the worst. You're simply told to find a gas room and lead Michael into it to defeat him. As you attempt to do this, however, Michael can appear at any moment and kill you instantly, which sounds creepy on paper, but in reality, in the game, it's not the slightest bit scary. Where to start? Well, firstly, when Michael does appear, he's on a set scripted path and will only appear for a few seconds before disappearing. I'm guessing this was done purposefully, to create moments like this where you turn your back running away from him, and then he's gone. However, this very rarely happens, and a majority of the time you're looking at him, and he just disappears right in front of you. So of course, this just made my confidence go up and want to see what happens if somehow, by some unquestionable mistake, Michael does manage to catch up with you. It's fine, I didn't want to hear her anyway. Oh, but that's not even the worst bit, because you literally know whenever he's about to appear, as you can literally hear his loud footsteps before he is visually revealed. I'm not sure if this is a glitch or a purposeful gameplay choice, but either way, you know exactly when he's coming, which makes the rest of the gameplay feel extremely predictable, removing any challenge from the game and any chances of having some decent scares or tension being created which I feel is really unfortunate, considering the atmosphere was so strong in the early parts of the game. Also, I'm fairly sure this guy should be dead, but hey, what do I know? Now, that's not to say that all the rest of the game is bad, as when you do reach the gas room, the player is treated to an amazing visual ending. And this right here is actually a really good moment in the game. I mean, just look at it. It's so cool. Stunning. And what's more, there's even a secret ending to the game, where you play as Michael for about 20 seconds, but it's still cool. Hell, you even see... Do 
Jason Voorhees. So overall, this fan game takes about 20 minutes to complete. It has a great beginning, not so great middle, and a visually brilliant ending that any fan of the Halloween series would love. So overall, what do I think of this game? Well, it certainly has its problems, but for a fan game by a single developer, it's quite well done. It's neat. It's got a lot of glitches, the model for the main character doesn't look that great, and the animations are extremely stiff. But despite this, there are also plenty of positives. The atmosphere is ripe and rich throughout the early levels. The hospital itself is really well designed with some little secrets that you can find here and there. And as I said, for the most part, the sound design is excellent. And because of all that, I'm giving the game a 5 out of 10. It's got massive problems, but there's one thing everybody should remember about it. It's completely free. Anyone can download it, and if you're a fan of the Halloween franchise, I recommend you go and check it out. And for my enjoyment rating, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Sure, it's very short, but like I said, it's completely free, and any fan of the Halloween franchise will enjoy it. So, that's what I thought of Halloween. The video... TJ, the light's gone out. TJ? TJ, is that you? Connor? Oh. Hello. Uh, Connor, is that you? Is this... Is this for the video? Because I've, I've kind of finished now. You're not Connor, are you? Oh shit. How are you even getting around? What are you, teleporting? I'm not even scared anymore, I'm just curious. Connor, you're alive. Surprised. But relieved. How can I repay you? Rent! For fuck's sake! Three months you've been living with me. No rent. You well, need to get a job. It's not my fault. This I can't just get a wages. job. It's a 90 day it's not, you, you no should, around. You haven't been paying rent at all. Get a fucking job. Get a job. I don't know what he's talking about. Hey, looking for a job? Ratson's Diner could be for you. TJ, is that you?